This is the train to Rockville Men. The PWBA Tour rolls on. Week one saw Stephanie Johnson bowl her way through the field in Rockford. It was Birgit Norike's turn at the Queens. In Minneapolis, Shannon O'Keefe added another title. And last week, it was first-time winner, Brianna Clemmer. Next stop, Rockville Center, and the BBL Classic right now. All aboard. Midtown Manhattan is just 25 miles away. First, you fight some traffic going east to the south shore of Long Island, complete with amazing beaches to get to Maple Lanes in Rockville Center, New York. We're on Long Island for the championship round of the BBL Classic. Five of the world's best bowlers are here, competing for a place in women's bowling history. This is Dave Ryan, along with the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard. This wraps up three events at the PWBA Long Island Classic Series. Step ladder bowling tonight. First match, two-time Queens champion, Diana Zavialova takes on the reigning player of the year, Brianna Cote. Three seat, four-time tour title is Stephanie Johnson. Her longtime Team USA teammate, 15 time titles, Shannon O'Keefe is the two seed. And the top seed is Danielle McEwen looking for her eighth career title tonight. Danielle joins us now. One game, Danielle, for the title as the top seed. What's your approach gonna be for the championship match? Um, well, I'm going to sit back and watch how the, the girls play the lanes for these first couple of matches, get a feel for where I need to play, and then just make 10 really good shots. Okay, you also mentioned that you are going to work on keeping your brain quiet. What will you do while you're watching to help get that brain where it needs to be? Exactly that. Try to keep my brain really slow, really quiet, work on the practice pairs over here, getting really comfortable physically, and then just let my body do what it knows how to do. All right, Carolyn, it is time for a future for the sport oil pattern for tonight. Very unique oil pattern, 43 feet. Medium volume of oil, 25.4 milliliters. We're using Navigate. It is a very medium mixture of oil, so it holds up pretty well. Here's where the ladies started, out here near the track area with stronger bowling balls to control the back end. As the transition occurred, they just continue to move to the middle part of the lane. Depending on what you were looking for to get the ball to the right, cleaner bowling balls. If you wanted to keep the ball in front of you, it was bowling balls that rolled sooner and were still giving you that small, smooth motion off the pattern. Here we go, tie to bowl. What a lineup tonight on Long Island. Dave Carroll and our entire crew, great to have you with us for more PWBA action. Longtime team Latvia star now lives in Texas. Diana Zavialova leads us off. <coughs> start to the left lane. Nice start from the strike. Good come out shot there by Diana. See, she's trying to loft it onto the lane just a little bit. That was something that we, we did see as the ladies migrated to the middle part of the lane. They wanted to get the ball out onto the lane to conserve energy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Tucson, Arizona, Brianna Cote. This week at the PWBA Long Island Classic, she's a runner up. As the top seed lost to Liz Culkin, 192-190. Liz, her third career title. So Brianna also, the championship match last week, St. Pete, Florida, lost to Brianna Clemmer. Lots of recent championship round appearance. The time for Hurley's a four pin. The reigning player of the year is clearly in gear, CDB, with her game right now. Seems like the ladies right now are playing a little bit left of the track area around the 12 13. And yes, before we went on air, you and I were chatting about this. I think she's my front runner on tonight. Now, again, I don't want anybody saying, oh my God, how can CDB say that? They just started. I just think she's the one that's been the most consistent. And she's used to the lights. It's been week after week. And I, I almost feel like she thinks she's overdue. For the four pin for the mark, got that no problem. 
And she said to us she feels so comfortable on TV. You make that many appearances, you're ready to break through. You know it as well as anyone with all your victories in your great career. And you can say what you want. I mean, come on, USBC, PWBA. Thank you. Hall yes. of Famer. Yeah. Every squirrel finds a nut, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's a good deal. I just, <laughs> I found a few, what can I tell you? Great numbers, great stats for Cote. There are some heavy hitters on this show tonight. That play for Rihanna, that looked good out of her hand. That's why it crunches the one three pocket all 10 down. And a player rolls a 300 game during tonight's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of Go Bowling. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. The oil pattern has yielded some high numbers. So it's always possible. First crack of the right lane for Diana. Had a hurry, didn't hurry enough. Now, one thing you're going to see in, in right here is we talked about where, right here, where the ladies started was a little bit further right playing straighter. Now, right here, you're going to see that Diana gets this ball way down the lane and way to the right. Off of her hand, it was going to the right. You had two options. When you chose to move left and do that, they were using actually balls that were just a little weaker that would conserve energy and flip. Right now, Diane is using an ASIM. It's a little smoother. All I would do is actually move to the right just a little bit. I would make an adjustment because in talking to Matt McNeil, he's saying that the ladies were saying that the left lane actually hooks a little earlier. So it seems like, oh, the ball is dying on the back end. Well, no, it's hooking earlier. The right lane actually has a lot more recovery. Tough lead there, Carol. Two, four, eight, ten. Really open. Down by 12 pins. Third frame here. Oh, good out of her hand, but leaves the eight pin on the left lane. Great mental shot, though. I mean, great shot coming back for the two, four, eight, ten. Right here playing a little bit more direct. Notice how she did not get the ball to the right. That's telling you right there, make the choice or make the move. But that was that was a great shot after the shot on the right lane. We talked about Brianna's confidence, the same for Diana. She's made three of the last four championship rounds. Success here in Long Island. A-Pin got that, has her mark. Austin St. Pete last week to Brianna Cote. So a rematch here, 218-203. As the two seed, and Brianna Clemmer claimed her first title last week. Exciting. Lots of championship round appearances here for the reigning player of the year. Is this her time to break through for a victory? I called her Miss Consistency. She really has been in the hunt, and if she hasn't made the top 12, she's been close. Much more direct, much more direct line to the pocket out of Brianna. Very simple game. Five step gets the ball started on that second step. And right here, though, I love that she just, I mean, look at this. Perfect, and she's just waiting on it. And as she goes forward, you see the ball just drop from her backswing, rotates around it, her natural game, and boom, blows the rack. She talked to us today. Really nothing has changed. Not a lot of difference with her game plan. Just trying to control the pocket and focus on herself, her game. Left lane, perfect. Tattoos the one three pocket. Looking for some great PWBA gear? Visit the official online store of the PWBA at shop. PWBA.com. 
Love the shirts. I'm a big coffee guy, CDB, you know me. Got the, the Dunkin' right here. You've got your Starbucks. Coffee mug. Travel coffee cups. Critical. <laughs> With yes. all the kids, you know, we're driving around exactly. constantly. You got a coffee up. So go to the website, pick one of those up. Diana. All right. Much more direct shot by Diana. Still in it. She's in a ball that's going to roll a little bit sooner, be a little bit smoother. Let's see where her break point is on this shot. Still playing much deeper than Brianna. But see right here. She gets the ball way in. This is about that 9-10 area. The last shot was way out here. Still should make a move, or depending on what Brianna does, it might be time for a ball change, and you just got to commit to it because you'll be behind in the match. You got to commit. Diana talked to us today about bowling your heart out. Great preparation this week with the three events for the U.S. Open coming up next week in Glens Falls, New York. That is a long, grueling format to try to make the show. I think this is the best look on the lane, much more direct. She's laying it down about 22 to about 12 on that left lane. Again, she could probably on that right lane make just a little bit of a parallel move to the right and play them almost similar. I said from the beginning, when I saw the ladies practicing, I do like the straighter angles because I don't think the development of throwing it way right has is there yet. Go take Carolyn oh, looks boy. for the 32 pin lead in the fifth frame. Got it. You could see when she let that one go, she kind of just got up there a little bit. I think she was a little shocked that got back there because she got this one, as we just talked about, further right down the lane, but it just comes up right here. The other shot was about right here, this one, out to about that eight board, but look at this light hit. And this is what you saw early on in the block, the light hits really were the ones you wanted because the lanes were yet settling down. You didn't know if you had how much hook you had to the right and you didn't have any hold to start. So much pulling this week. Brianna, all the bowlers <laughs> admitted to us when they finished at two o'clock here local. Mentally and physically tired. Now they got to gut it out, try to win here. Five in a row, nickel for Brianna Cote. And a fiddly 42 pins halfway home of match one in the stepladder finals here on Long Island. PWBA tour action on CBS Sports Network rolls on after this. Cote looks good. And you're in beautiful Long Island, New York. And some great bowling for Brianna Cote, a five bagger and a big lead in match one. Next up will be Stephanie Johnson, who's won already this year on tour to open the season in Rockford. Steph, we talked about this in our interview earlier today with you. How does that victory help you in terms of confidence for tonight? Oh my gosh, just being on TV, it's just a reminder that you deserve to be there. All your hard work pays off and um, that's just the icing on the cake. I want to talk about the um, fantastic position round match where you made a decision before you bowled that match. It was a must win situation. Tell us about that decision. Yeah, the reward was way outweighing the risk. So I just committed to the decision with the ball that I was throwing and it all paid off. Thanks, Stephanie. We appreciate it. See you later in the show. Right now, Diana Zabjalova is in a big hole. So CDB, if you're Diana in the commercial break, what are you talking about with your tour reps? I think you're talking about more of the right lane because that is the one where she's left the two, four, eight, ten, and come in light. You know, she obviously got the strike, but it's that decision time. Do I make a move or do I change balls? And here's the thing. I think she needs to make the move because I do like the way she's throwing it. She's not trying to overhook it, which again, till the lane settled down and they created that hold, they didn't want to really come around it. Time is now for Diana. No help on the seventh pin. And I think that was a very good shot. So to me, depending on what Brianna does, it may be time for a ball change on this right lane. She comes in throws it great gets it out on the lane again i still that looks great she's got that to about that 10 board where she did on the last shot looked good but just a little too lazy down lane needs something with the just a little bit more kick cross lane seven pin no problem 
for her spirit. Right, or just go to a ball that's a little bit cleaner, you know, or more mid laney with a little more kick. That one just it seems to just be, you know, just not enough on the back. So much strategy involved with your tour rep, with the feel, with your alignment to the lane conditions, and not a lot of time in a single match format. They're down by 43 pins. Needed a strike there to make it interesting to the seventh works on a spare. Really needs it and gets it. Big strike for Zabialaba. Get ready for some Friday Night Hoops action as the Seattle Storm takes on Eastern Conference Player of the Month, Alyssa Thomas, and the Connecticut Sun. Tip-off begins at 7 Eastern. Right here on CBS Sports Network. Great hoops coming your way Friday night. So you want to be a champion. You want to win. Cote, Carol has had some time to think about this big lead. She's using two different balls. She's using uh, the hustle series. The camo on the right lane is a little more mid laney and smooth. And the wrap on the left lane is a little cleaner with a little more kick. Okay. Yeah. Got and the kicks you wanted, got the strikes you wanted, CDB, no doubt about that. <laughs> Stays red hot, expands the lead to 53 pins with a six bagger. Right here, crossing about 17, 18 at the arrows, not getting it any further right than 10, just perfect. What I like about Brianna's game, and this is meant as a total compliment, she keeps it simple. She said she hasn't changed since 2019. She just wants to be, um, she wants to control the pocket, fill her frames, and she figures if she does that, strikes will eventually come. Well, I agree. Like, I think that's old school thinking, but I think it's, it's sports thinking. And that's why I think she's been so successful. Looking for a third career PWBA Tour title. And crunches 10 to the pit. What a fantastic shot there in the one-three pocket. So if I were Diana at this point, I would change balls on the right wing. I, I mean, at, I'm going to. I don't know if it's mathematically over, but let's see. Diana still has 237. We're going to look, look over at Cecil. He's going to tell us. And two nothing, obviously two nine. Really, two nine? I can't get that one out. <laughs> Nine spare strikes after that for Brianna. She's been brilliant. Eight frame to ball cut change. to 53. There's the ball change we talked about. Trip four pin. So it does cut in the lead, but it is a big hill to climb for Zabialaba. I love it, but I'm going to say something here. Definitely a ball change to a ball. As you can see, not as much surface, much cleaner. Still going to conserve its energy. She is playing the same part of the lane. She has not changed that, but look at this conserves and has a little bit more on the back and that's what she's looking for here's here's what i think and i'm going to tell you this is where when you have confidence in yourself there are times you tend to know you know what i can make a ball work i can but now the talent pool is is just so tough you have to be quicker with those moves stephanie johnson waits the winner of this match Strike in the left lane for Zabiala, but the problem is, since the nine spare all strikes for Brianna Cote, she is on fire here. And the foundation frame goes for eighth in a row. As you go up 53, and essentially put this away. Long grind to get here. Three different events. 24 games of bowling. Just to make this show. They've been bowling all week here on Long Island. Seven pins. Sometimes it's your night. Down it goes. Timber on the seven. Another strike for Cote. And it's not so much where she threw it and what this ball did. It's right here what those pins did. And here's what I want to see. Look at the look on her face after that pin goes down. She means business tonight. And I'm telling you, the way she's playing the lanes, 
as they transition from game to game, she will chase it to the left and she will create her own hold. Four championship appearances in the last five events. I mean, we talked about it. Been red hot, just trying to finish. That's been the only thing standing between her and a, another player of the year type season. Another strike. This match is over. Trip 10 pin. And it's official now for Brianna Cote. Continues her roll. Awesome bowling here tonight on Long Island to begin this event. Stephanie Johnson is next. Stephanie looks for her second title of the year. Zavialva bowling so well all week here on the island, but falls to Brianna Cote. Tremendous effort for Cote tonight. Strike streak of 10 in a row for the reigning player of the year. Brianna Cote, 289-202 win over Diana Zavialova in match one. Stephanie Johnson is next for Cote. A three shot routine is almost as important as the shot itself, as Dasha Kovalova tells us in this week's BCTV Tip of the Week. Hi, this is Dasha, and for this week's tip, I would like to talk about three shot routine. One strike away from perfection, her second career tour title, $10,000 bonus, a lot riding on the shot. You know, I always feel nervous when I bowl. So for me to bring myself into that concentration zone, I have to do a set of certain things to get comfortable and kind of remember that bowling in the tournament is kind of like bowling in practice. So what I usually do, I wipe my bowl three times and then I do a little uh, swish swish with my foot three times as well then i take a deep breath and then my brain knows that at this point i need to focus and i need to execute my shot for a 300 game come along. Unforgettable moment of PWBA history. Beat Liz Johnson at Louisville that year. Amazing. Thanks, Dasha, for that. Stephanie Johnson and Brianna Cote head to head. Match two is on the way here at CBS Sports Network. Great PWB action is next. Great match on the way. Steph Ladder bowling here tonight on Long Island. 289 202 blowout win for Cote over Zagalava in match number one. Now, Stephanie Johnson head to head with the reigning player of the year. Competing for that trophy, big prize money here in Rockville Center. Ten straight strikes for Brianna in match one. Nine spare to begin. And a bunch of strikes to take a big lead and a stranglehold in the first match. Her second match starts left lane. Ringy 10 pin. Just another great shot by Brianna. Playing the lanes identical as to when she left them. She went over to the practice pairs, leaves a ring 10. She's still using two different balls. Stephanie obviously opted to have Brianna start the match, which means she'll finish. I don't think she has a bad lane. Obviously, you can tell that. So I talk about that a lot, about whether you yourself like to finish the match or do you have a favorite lane. That's how I think they make their decisions. Ted Finn got that. So interesting, Carol, the mental approach. The strategy is extensive at this level. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number three seed from McKinney, Texas, Stephanie Johnson. One to begin the season in Rockford, Illinois, outside Chicago. Her fourth career title. Back on TV again. Or a great bowling family for the Dallas Metroplex. On the right lane for Stephanie tonight. Great start. 
again, I think you're going. I think you're going to see the lanes being played just a little bit straighter from the upcoming matches. Stephanie, very simple game, just like Brianna. Four step, gets the ball into the swing, nice. And look at this again. I love this. Right here, I mean, you can't ask for anything more pitcher perfect getting ready into the foul line. And again, she just drops it down into the swing. There is, there you go, and uses all of her leverage at the end to create her power naturally. Help, 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 help. Left wanted some help. And a flat 10 this time for Stephanie. She was the five seed. In Rockford to begin the season, beat her best friend, longtime Team USA teammate, both retiring after this year from Team USA, Shannon O'Keefe, 243-220, beat Hall of Famer Kelly Hewitt, beat Brianna Clemmer, and then Liz Culk in the top seed to win the title in Rockford. Ten pin, got that. Speaking of which, first tournament of the season, Stephanie Johnson ran the table at historic Cherry Bowl, Rockford, Illinois, birthplace of a PWBA, winning her fourth tour title and first since 2018. Amazing moment. Big watch party in South Florida, we're told right now. Everyone's in Miami. Uh, Chris Johnson, former PBA Rookie of the Year, and the kids were in St. Pete with Steph last week, and then have gone across state to see her family. They're locked in right now. Okay, looking to stay locked in right lane, Lisa Fortpin. Keeping the ball in play, managing that pocket, just like Brianna said she would, but off of that shot, Definitely might be time to make a move. Ring 10 and a four pin. Ball just coming up a little high, sharp. She got that one right, a little sharp off the back end. Again, when they started to see it, when they got their balls to the right, if it became too sharp of a look, it was a parallel net move immediately to the left because what that forward oil is going to do is it's eventually going to carry down to the back end and create some build up in the middle. 4C looks for the four pin, got that single pin spare conversion. Right, Tucson, Arizona. Won once last year, the PWBA ITRC Classic in Arlington. USBC headquarters. That was player of the year. Six championship round appearances last year. Wow, led the tour in that category. Tied with Bertie Crowley, Tasha Kovalova, and Stephanie Zavala. Before the Bowl TV Classic, it made three straight championship round appearances. And that's why. Touch is the one three pocket again. Good shot, keeping that ball way, like you can see down lane, not getting it right of that 12 area, about 17 to 12, playing them very straight. And what I mean by straight is, I mean, yes, there is a little bit of angle, but the other shows you've seen, the, the ladies actually had something to throw to, a spot down lane where they had to get their ball to the right. Tonight, that's not the case. Three championship round appearances, looking for a second victory. And with shots like that, she might just get there. As she told us, CDB, in the interview after the round round match play in Reno last year, the classic with three events, she made two or three shows. Same here on Long Island this year. Correct. Simple style of Stephanie. I love it. Very process oriented. And again, this is meant, I love that they, if they don't try to do anything fancy. They do what they do best. And what did she say? I've practiced, I know what I can do, I just need to let my body do it. And that's it. The probability looks good right now for Steph. Go up by 11 pins. Watch it. Or 
10 split. This ball a little bit slower and her ball speed. You can tell right off her hand a little bit further left, but definitely a little slower. As you can see, it hooked up just a little sooner. And don't forget, that left lane is the one where everybody's saying it definitely hooks earlier and in the middle part of the lane. So with Stephanie, I don't think it's a ball change. It's either a move, a parallel move, or just make sure to keep up your ball speed. She does it so well. Takes out the four ten stands. Open frame, though, for Johnson here. We shall see things develop with ball changes potentially. 11 pin lead now for Brianna. And adding into her fourth frame works on a strike. And you can see Stephanie looked over and said, was that me? I think she was a little slow. Now, I don't know what they said to her, but I'm just from here. <laughs> Your opinion <laughs> I'm is. just saying, hey, somebody go hey. tell her. I think she said, yeah, I can't tell. I'm just saying, I, I think it looked a little slow. Save the double in the fourth, 21 okay. Yes. Follow the PLBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and on BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video highlights and news each week to follow your favorites. There's Stephanie in action. Hashtag Bowl Fearless. Did you like my tweets? I put a lot out today on Twitter. Did you I retweet? Did. Yes, of course. Thank I you. always Thank do. Thank you. Always do, Dave. <laughs> always tag you. Twitter, that's, that's what I'm saying earlier today. I just wasn't feeling the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks for the turkey here. Up by 31, midway point. Another fantastic shot. Now, I'm having visions because her last show, she was running the ladder, and she was taking every match by command, and the opponents were giving her that, that opportunity because there was that one open or no doubles. So we're, we're looking at that again, and she just is out there for, I mean, just fire right now. Beat Verity Crawley last week. Beat Jordan Richard, the three seed. Beat Saviala by the two seed. And then Brianna Klimmer knocked her off 226 181 in the championship match. But similar feel for sure. Cote here tonight. Johnson, nice bounce back. Great shot. She's got this right lane dialed in. Again, I think that ball looked as if she threw that one a little bit more with a little more ball speed. Right there, everybody is using roughly the same break point, and I think that's about the 12, 13 area. Again, she's using an asymmetrical ball that's just a little bit cleaner, a little bit cleaner with a little surface. Ball change on this left lane, going to an RST2. Another asymmetrical ball that's gonna be just a little sooner, a little smoother. A little push. Comes in high though. Three, six, ten stand. Doesn't get there. Slows down. Stephanie definitely looks as if she made the move to the left. Does not get the ball as far right. That was about 13, 14 down lane. The ball goes high. I really do think this left lane, it's, it's obviously apparent because everyone has played it to hook earlier. She definitely needs to make a bigger move if she stays with that ball. Three six ten. Got that. Has her spare. But down in match two to Brianna Cote trying for her first tour title of 2022. Conclusion of match two on the way. Turkey for Brianna Cote, a lead on Stephanie Johnson by 31 pins midway through match number two. Next up will be Shannon O'Keefe, who stands by now. So, Shannon, your key to success this week, what was it to get to your third show of the season? Staying as patient as possible. This was a really long week with back-to-back-to-back -to -to -back -to -back, uh, tournaments. And so it was just really being patient and trying to fill frames as much as possible and just focus on me. 
Okay, and one of the keys to success, you said, for tonight is keeping your hands stable. Yes. What is your one thought to be able to do that? The biggest thing for me is actually to really feel like I'm sitting on my power step and then not kind of whip my hand around it. When I sit on my power step, my hand is able to come through just nice and easy. So that's the focus. Thanks. As always, Shannon, we Thanks, appreciate guys. it. 15-time short title with Shannon O'Keefe, Hall of Fame lock. Back on TV again under the bright lights. The head coach at McHenry, national champs again this year. Brianna Cote looking like a champion so far here tonight. In her sixth frame, tries for the four bagger and a 41 pin lead. Got a 289 in her first match. Looking for the help, flat on 10 instead. Was a little deeper on that shot. Made the move. I believe she left a four pin on this lane last shot. Looks good. Just comes in a little half pocket. The one thing I like about Brianna, I do think she's ahead of the moves. I don't think she's afraid to move. Once she sees just that little bit of change based on the shot she threw, she makes the move or changes the ball. Nine spare, nine spare to begin this match. She had nine spare in the first frame against Savialba and then 10 strikes in a row. So she has been remarkably consistent so far into her second match. Got the 10 pin, has her spare. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern. Catch up with your favorite golf connoisseur as he brings you the latest headlines and highlights from the green. Watch Course Record with Michael Breed right here on CBS Sports Network. So it takes, right? CDB got to be consistent. Champion said it. Fill frames. Avoid disasters. And, and I really do think that comes from confidence because you start to feel confident about not only the decisions you're making, both on and off the lanes, and you're seeing it quicker. I mean, confidence does a lot. It just it trickles everything down, right? And you're seeing that out of Brianna right now. And she's worked very hard at it. Seventh frame, trying to stay in control, does just that. Big shot, 60 feet to success for Cote on the left lane. What a shot. Right here, look at that leverage at the end. She just whips through every shot she throws. And what I mean by whips through is she continues her shot. She's long with it. She doesn't cut the shot off. It just looks great. She has such stability at the end. Left lane, right lane, break down. Right lane here for Steph. It's got to really hurry up and it missed the target. Oh, terrible. One, two, seven, ten, Washington. So she's, she's still using the same ball in the right lane, but right here you can see Swing got just a little steep. We talked about that in her interview, but look at how far to the right she got this ball. That's out to that 7-8 area. Everybody's been keeping it about 12, and right there, just no recovery. And that was the key. When you got steep and got it to the right and missed the move to the left, that's what happened. And, but I'm telling you, she will make a move on this right lane when she gets back up there. Lots of cover here. And the 7 10 stand, so... Devastating open frame, already a huge hole in this second match of the show. And Brianna Cote, emotionless, cool, calm, collected on the bench, sees the lead expand. The win probability is pretty significant now. It's, wow, almost 92.5%. Eighth for Stephanie Johnson. Great shot. Bowl TV delivers live multi-channel coverage of the PWBA Tour, PBA 50, Team USA, and USBC Collegiate and Youth Tournaments, plus much more great bowling content. Visit BowlTV.com to subscribe today. Bowling lives here. Beautiful look. Lighthouse, South Shore, Long Island. Montauk Lighthouse. I know you're from Jersey. 
Yes. I'm originally from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It's great to be back in New York again. Been a while. I'm going to the city tomorrow. Are you? Oh, now, now my family knows that. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Go Terry. Yes. The Pimps have no chance against Brianna Cote here tonight. No, and I think what Brianna is truly doing right now is managing her angles. She has not had any error shots where she's gotten it too far to the right. She's just managing that front part of the lane and doing it with confidence. I do believe, too, though, Stephanie went back to her other ball on the left lane, that last shot. So that's something else we're going to look at. Yes, okay, is next. Shannon O'Keefe. A winner in Minneapolis this year for a 15th career PWBA Tour title. Another brilliant season for O'Keefe. For the Turkey to lead by 66. Another one to 10. Down it goes. Kote is rolling here tonight. Big winner for South Yalaba. And about to shut down Stephanie Johnson's hope for a second title this season. Right here, again, just complete confidence, stays down with the shot, looks just like Julia Bond, stays there to the ball, hits the pins. Oh, Levi Kenzie, mommy loves you. The kids are watching back in South Florida, as we told you. Stephanie has the white bow tonight. That's one of Mackenzie's bows. Now the big four left. She had the green bow on for the Rockford Open, which you won. Now that's the white tonight in honor of her daughter, but not going to happen tonight for Steph Johnson. Still a great run to get to the show. Two shows or championship round appearances of the three here at the PWBA Long Island Classic. These bowlers have been busy this week on the island. Just a tip pick. This match is over. Stephanie said she was going to be patient. She was going to have commitment. And she wasn't going to second guess herself. And I think she's done that because Stephanie is a shot maker. But again, on that shot, I don't know if she made the move. It was hard to see. But I do think she. She doesn't look as if she's using her ball speed to her advantage. I mean, it's just looking a little slow and hooking up just a little too soon. There you go. Great execution. Great run. Quite a wait for Stephanie Johnson, but right now no one can stop Brianna Cote. She is in control. Zavialova first, and now Stephanie Johnson have fallen. Janet O'Keefe is next. Great matchup all the way on CBS Sports Network. Two forty-three, one sixty-six. Brianna Cote in two matches, averaging two sixty-six so far here tonight. Two impressive wins. The Bowers to Veterans Link was started in 1952 as a way to help veterans, especially those injured by war, return to some sense of normalcy through recreational activities, including bowling. John is the chairman of BBL, one of the bowling industry's oldest charities. The La Spina family have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for BBL in the last few years, including a $25,000 check. Presented today here in Rockville Center. Once that money gets allocated locally to various groups that support veterans, great to see the family here tonight in Rockville Center. What an amazing cause. You can check out much more at bbl.org. Bowlers to Veterans Link. To brighten the lives of Americans, veterans, and active duty men and women through recreational and therapeutic programs and services. Certainly is a great organization. More great bowling on the way. What motto of the BBL will always be here for those who serve. The trophy on the line here tonight on Long Island. And Brianna Cote looking good so far. Big wins over Zavialova and Stephanie Johnson. Some prior Long Island winners here, CDB. Uh, we have Dorothy Fothergill, great bowler in her time frame. Nikki Giannullius, one of the first ones to ever hook the ball un unbelievably. Carol Giannotti and Stephanie Zavala. And I think I said that wrong. Zavala. 
I'm We're friends with her, year. so she'll forgive me. I'm sure she will. <laughs> We're here last year. Right now, Brianna Cote is looking unbeatable through two matches, but she's got to take on the 15-time titleist. Long time, soon to be retiring Team USA member Shannon O'Keefe, who is having a player of the year type season again. Cote's third match starts here. First strike. outside St. Louis, as we mentioned, the McKendry Bearcat colors, as always on TV, the national champs this year won the NCAA team tournament in Columbus, Ohio. Several times national coach of the year at McKendry. Great start, right lane. Great shot by Shannon, of course, no stranger to TV. And I believe I'm being told that she will be using two different balls. Yes, she is. She's using a Zen Master, a symmetrical ball here on the right lane. Clean ball, but reads the mid, not a lot of surface. Smooth reaction to the pocket. And going with the dark code, which is one of our ASIM balls, a little bit cleaner, has a little bit more hit. Wow, great start. Back-to-back jacks as she crushes the one-free pocket. Those pins have no chance. Shrapnel in the pit. Any player rules a 300 game during tonight's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowing.com. Visit GoBowing.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. No perfection yet, but Cote had 10 in a row in the first match. Had seven total strikes in the second. Okay. Yes. Brianna, after waiting, has come out and again just as aggressive as she was the first match, as well as Shannon O'Keefe. And again, both ladies can increase their ball speed naturally, which I love, and we've talked about that over the last couple of weeks. But the leverage and everything that Brianna does and keeping it simple is just, it really has been working for her. She really has not tried to go out of the norm. I hate to say that she's open-minded, but not trying to do anything that's out of the norm. And it, that is really what has kept her consistent. Ran over Shannon head to head already by 13 pins. Left lane, trying to stay high. <laughs> Yet another strike. For Brianna Cote. And you'll see the further left they move with those parallel moves where their feet and their eyes move to the left. If they miss just a little bit left, the ball holds right there. She's a little deeper, laying at about 22, down to about 15, 16. And right here, you're going to see she now has just a little bit more hold, a little bit more room. That's why the scores were so high this week. Once that, that hole developed, where they had just a little bit of bump to the right, and the ball would come up to the pocket, but it was the hold, and they could just shim it to the pocket, that's when the scores increased. Perfection right, ends here. Right here, Shannon got that ball. She actually got that ball deeper and to the right. Way too much angle, and she talked a little bit about that where with that, with her right foot, her power step, when she's not on it long enough, her swing gets just a little steep, and it just, it's almost like a pull down a little bit. And gosh, Shannon never uses any muscle. But those shots right there, just that little bit, increased that ball going from in to out and did not recover. Two, five, eight, on a chop, so the two pin stands open frame. And right here, she uses her strike ball to shoot at the spare. And honestly, very unlike Shannon. Excellent spare shooter. Just ball never got there. Oh. 
Tries to rebound left lane. Does just that trip, Tam Pin. Got a good shot. However, <laughs> the way Brianna Cote is bowling right now, that open frame might be enough. I know it's early here in match three, but she has just been so consistent. Much better shot right here. 19 at the arrows to about 14, 15. Great shot. And look at the leverage and look at that balance arm to the left. I mean, my gosh, come on. There's no movement there whatsoever. Cote for the front four, match three. Little help? Sure. Why not? Another strike. That's a great shot to show where we just talked a little bit about that area where you've got to the left, got to the right. She has moved deeper. But here, just gets it out to about 13, 14, where the other shot was around 15, 16. But look at that. Gets that light mixer. And again, that was a great hit to have actually today in match point and yesterday. Seven-time member of Team USA. Immense success. Representing our country all over the world. Success on the lanes here on the island. Wow. For the first five. How about the nickel here? Oh, no. Nothing left of the rack CDB. She is completely locked in right now. Absolutely. She just keeps following that transition. She just keeps making those moves to the left. Again, you saw on the right lane, she has that little bump to the right. The left lane, they're definitely playing the hold because as that lane starts to hook earlier, you definitely don't want to get your ball too far right. It runs out of gas. It just doesn't get there. Keith works on a strike, right lane, cutting the lead at 35, does just that. Much needed for Shannon O'Keefe, coming off the open a couple frames back. So right here, Shannon, four steps. She gets that ball moving downward on that first step, right here again. Now here's what's, I, what's funny about Shannon, not funny about Shannon, but look at this, how much closer she is. And it almost looks as ever feet are together, right? You usually see that out of our two-handers. But right here, when she gets just a little too steep, it's still up in the air and she gets through it. Now that last shot definitely was perfection, but that's where it usually takes place when she just gets a little too steep in that backswing. Trip forehand, <laughs> just pop with some help and cuts into 25 pins here midway through our third match. Cote O'Keefe, exciting conclusion on the way from Long Island. BBL Classic on CBS Sports Network. Brianna Cote, 25 pin lead. What a start, front five here in match number three against Shannon O'Keefe. Time for the Bowl TV Highlight of the Week. Brings us our other two champions this week on Long Island, the Classic Series. Liz Culkin of Schenectady, New York. Took the Long Island Classic with a victory over Brianna Cote. And also, Sherry Tam did win her third title with the Bowl TV Classic. So, this is the third of the PW Bay Long Island Classic events. And Liz Culkin gets the victory. And moments ago, a little fun. <laughs> I mean, right, Carolyn? You got to relax a little between segments during the commercial break. And <laughs> Shannon Absolutely. having some fun. Uh, Brianna, boy, she is laser focused during action. I mean, emotionless. I mean, definitely. But in definitely. the break, having a little fun. <laughs> definitely, when you step on the lanes, what did um, what did Stephanie Johnson say earlier today? She goes, "Oh my God, I want to kick everybody's butt when I'm on the lanes." I go, "Of course you do. Friends later, you are competitors now." Looks to stay perfect in match three. Looking for help. Whoa. Gets it. Lift trip from Messenger. Cross deck for the four pin. Down it goes. The opposite trip four that Shannon got on the left lane. Look at this pin come across the deck. And again, something I'm going to make mention of right after we see this right here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Is, you know, you watch these matches. You have to remember now, ladies are sitting during the commercial break. 
Those are the hardest shots to throw, and she's been rock solid every time. Front six, partner, halfway to perfection. Only emotion you see is after a strike, and she's had a lot of strikes. U.S. Women's Open, Tuesday, June 21st, 7 Eastern, here on CBS Sports Network. Mm -hmm. And then August 9th, the final major of the PWBA Tour Championship. Two big majors on the way on CBS Sports Network this year. Front set, left lane, yes! Touchdown, seven up, seven down. And the amazing night continues for Brianna Cote. And it's funny, on that shot, it looked like she kind of just looked up and gave it a look like she, oh, I got that one in. But again, with that forward oil, it is carrying the, the, the oil down the lane and it actually builds up a little bit more in the middle part of the lane so you can make the move left and use the hole to your advantage. No help in the seven pin there for Shannon O'Keefe, who has been dealing in the last six months or so with a pretty severe left hip injury. Lots of physical therapy, ice treatment needed for that. In and out with confidence in terms of what you can do on the approach up to the foul line. And then a right thumb injury that she showed us today was pretty bad dealing with that, too. So it's not easy. So much bowling for these amazing players. Seven pin there, no worries. But you know as well as anyone, Carolyn, it's a long struggle with these formats. Three events in one week, and it can be tough to stay up physically, right? It is, yeah, because some of the formats are two days, right? They bowl on Friday and Saturday, boom, they're done, they go home, right? So they get some time to rest. This was a longer format in that they were the three separate tournaments, more games in one day, and of course they're getting ready to go to the U.S. Open. So it's, uh, you know, unusual that you could have this long of a format before the U.S. Open, which is going to be a long format. Just a good shot left lane there for O'Keefe. Talk to us today about trying to handle the lingering hip pain how important that would be and trying to slow everything down on tv we asked her why so much success again this year on television she's just trying to go moment by moment not rush ahead mentally she reads lots of motivational and sports psychology books tries to get to at least one a week Helps in her coaching, too. Not going to help against Cote right now. Looks to stay perfect. Front eight. Another one. I even gave the old one that one. Look at this. She's had three shots on that lane where the ball has done this. Comes in light half pocket. Watch this. Just gets it a little bit further right, but still a good shot. Right here, you can see it's a little bit further right. Almost like it just blows that five to the right, and then the six and the ten just fall off the deck. But again, there are no points for pretty. You're just here to knock down the most pins. Just the strikes. Top seed, Danielle McEwen. Looks for her eighth career title, first of the year. She's had a great season. Lots of TV for DMAC. Cote looks for the front nine. Had to put this away. How about it, Brianna? Bring in 10 pin and the strike streak ends with a great shot. <laughs> lane. But still, just the single pin spare conversion now for Cote. Great shot. And actually, that 10 pin, if you watch it right here, another great execution by Brianna. But right here, if you, oh, you can't see it with the, oh, here you are. You're going to see it now. Watch this 10 pin. See how it moves? Did you see it? 
moved around a little bit. A little nudge there, yeah, yeah. a little movement. Not but quite enough, though. Wow. 289, 202 over Zavialova. 243, 166 over Johnson. And crushing superstar Shannon O'Keefe here in the third match. Watch it. All right. Just the side of the pin. That's an upbeat spare. Ah, oh, she wasn't boy. worried. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Any non-strike here for Shannon in the foundation frame, and this one's over. Demolishing some stars on tour here. Cotes. Looking good. O'Keefe needs it. Will not get it. This match is over. It's official now. Fourth seeded Brianna Cote from Tucson. Is off to the championship match. Our bid for a third career PWBA Tour title continues. Brilliant bowling for Cote tonight. She has, been there for Shannon. she has taken command from game one like she did on her last show. This is what she did, but I'm going to tell you this. I think the lanes are playing to her favor. And I think she looks very confident and she looks very strong. And I think she's going to be very hard to beat. Nine spare or better, right? The entire night. That's been it. I mean, she's just been incredibly consistent for Cote. Dispatching of some really talented bowlers along the way, including two time player of the year, Shannon O'Keefe. Shannon made some good shots on that right lane. Just got that ball just a little bit further right when she was on the right lane. Left lane has been rock solid. It's going to be interesting, though, and I always bring this up. So Danielle will have choice, but I don't think Brianna has a bad lane. So to me, it's going to be all about if Danielle feels she has a better look on one lane or the other. Well, Stephanie told us before the show tonight, she was warming up in the Twin Cities and heard over the PA system that she had 14 titles. She looked around, who, who's got four? Oh, I have 14. Well, it became 15 that day. Just still in awe of what she's accomplished in her great career. And clearly the top of her game with another show, but always so much you can do against near perfection. Great showing. Shannon O'Keefe. But Brianna Cote has just been that much better against now three great bowlers. She'll take on Danielle McEwen, the top seed for the title, next. How about Brianna Cote, 278, 224 winner over 15-time title at Shannon O'Keefe. Brilliant through three matches. Danielle McEwen is next in the championship match. Some other finishers here. Carolyn, some big names. Maria Rod Jose Rodriguez, my goodness, that last 7-10 in that game cost her the show. Verity Crawley, eighth Clara Guerrero, ninth Lindsay Boomershine making a charge this week. 10, Shalin Zukafli, 11, Missy Parkin, 12th Jordan Richard, 13th Sandra Gungora. Good to see her back in the finals. And 16th we're getting all college bowlers and then there's the liz johnson in 18th so again you see a nice bag of of players there and the talent pool just keeps getting deeper they run alongside the hall of famer carolyn doran ballard here on long island so brianna cote cdb just brilliant averaging 270 through three matches can anyone stop her there's one person left in danielle McEwen. absolutely and i love how they're both going to play the lanes i said this early on i liked straighter was greater and chasing the angles to the left i think both ladies going to play them the same but right now you have to admit brianna cote has the most confidence and everything she is doing is correct 
And again, the pins, trip four, blower seven, no flat tens. I mean, she's got it. We will crown a champion right after this on CBS Sports Network. Who wins the PWBA BBL Classic? Either Cote or McEwen will find out. It's on the way. Pro Cote has been fantastic here tonight, trying for her third career PWBA Tour title. Subject to the BPAA moment of the match. Last match, head to head, Shannon O'Keefe had the front eight looking for a strike in the ninth frame, and the ringing 10 pin ends the dream. Got another 300 game on TV. Would have been a $10,000 bonus from Go Bowling. But still a tremendous night so far for Cote. I mean, shooting 8 10, pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Stony Point, New York, Danielle McEwen. <laughs> Bowling's changed at about 2 Eastern here today, three hours before the show. With the round robin match play, the top 24 from the three events total leading up to the show. And Danielle said, you know what? We're tired. I'm tired. But now the lights are on. It's go time for McEwen. Looking for some help. Does not get it with the four pin. Begin the championship match on the left lane. Okay, so Danielle is going to go against what what I'm saying. I'm seeing on the lanes, but that doesn't mean anything because Danielle is a phenomenal bowler. Right here, she is the only one tonight to use a super strong ball. Right here, she's using a gem. She's a little bit further left and not throwing it as hard as she normally does. So, again, remember about how when you make the move left, there was more buildup in the middle part of the lane. So, I'm not so I'm not so sure this is a bad choice because she's going to play her game, and Brianna's going to continue to do her game. First three events of the year, the top seed did not win, and then in St. Pete last week, Brianna Clemmer beat this star bowler, Brianna Cote, 226-181 championship match. Sherry Tan, Bowl TV Classic, beat Clara Guerrero. She was the top seed. So two of the last three top seeds have won. Let's find out what happens here tonight. Flat 10. Brianna did throw a different ball the, on her 10th uh, frame, her fill shot. On the right lane, it was a ball she was using on the left lane. She got this one just a little bit further right. A little lazy down lane, but leaves a 10 pin, makeable. Um, but decided to still stick with the ball she's been using, which, I mean, she shot 8-10. How can you argue with that? Seventh event of the season. We will have our seventh different winner. Yes. Emblematic of the incredible talent on tour this year, so many greats. Basically, the ladies tonight started in the track area and a mixture of balls, but balls that were actually a little bit cleaner and read this part of the lane. Right now, I would say from the first shot, Danielle is a little bit deeper around that 20 board, getting it to about 18 or 16-ish. But Brianna is still just a little bit further right using that break point of the 14-15. So interesting as the lanes transition the last match. A lot has happened, a lot of traffic. And Danielle just gets the one game. Not easy for the top seed. Great shot. Late four falls. On the right lane, it's been that blow the pins and get that seven pin off. On the left lane, it's been the trip four. We saw that out of Shannon O'Keefe. We've seen a couple here with Brianna getting the trip four to get her back in strike mode. McEwen right lane. Look for help in the flat 10. Yep, Danielle, Danielle crossing about 20 at the arrows. I'll make sure to watch that again too when we get another shot over here. About 20 at the arrows, here we go. 21 at the arrows out to about 13 14 right here ball coming in half pocket 
light hit, leaving the 10 pin. Cross lane, single pin, spare conversion, no words there. Now again, we're two frames in, so Danielle goes nine, nine, right? First shot, hooked up just a little bit, right lane, a little lazy down lane. Ladies have seen both lanes the same way throughout each game. So again, just a simple move, maybe even just a one and one to the right on that right lane. I think she'll be right in the pocket. Tip, tip, head left lane for Danielle McEwen. Great shot, much needed against the consistent Cote tonight. Right here, much deeper on the left lane. As you can see, look at this. We're gonna draw right here. So that looks close to hitting about 13, 14, right about there. But she's laying it down much deeper on the left lane. And right here, I'd say out to about 12. And then that half pocket kicked the 10 out, which I absolutely love. Back to Brianna, right lane, perfect. Those pins have no chance, none whatsoever. Another strike for Cote, who has been getting them in bunches throughout for three plus matches tonight. 18 pin victory over McEwen earlier this week here on Long Island in match play. And one of the things that, and sometimes we don't see it because you only see the frames on TV. But Brianna made the show when she had to get her ball to the right and down the lane. And now she's making a show where you need to keep your angles maybe a little bit more in front of you. That's how versatile these ladies are out here. And you don't, you know, a lot of times at home you only see these 10 frames. You don't see the greatness that they do throughout the week. Looks for the turkey. 21 pin lead left lane. And we've seen a flat 10 a lot. Not so much on the left lane. See if we can see if this is still playing them basically the same. Just right here, same break point. She has not been off on her break point at all. I mean, she very rarely throws it everywhere anyway. But again, just a little bit half pocket could be just a little bit quicker. I mean, you have to have a little adrenaline going. I mean, you just shot 810. You're, I mean, you're just striking at will, right? Leaving all sparables. So again, this is where she'll have to, you know, clean up the, the spare, and then sit down, take some deep breaths, go through her process, task at hand. The patriot of the Let's Beat Up family is here, John. Yeah, great to visit with him earlier. What a great bowling family. They do so much for not only the bowling community, but again, I you heard BBL very, very near and dear to his heart, along with Johnny Petraglia. Right lane for Danielle. Looking for help, seven pin. Not quite there this time. And the ball is to veteran link. Not the a bad shot. The family's so heavily involved there. Seem to be sorry. The I BBL apologize. Is, it's a I great, apologize. great uh, organization. Right here, as you can see, she started that ball in just a little bit deeper. It kind of, it laid off just a little bit. That right lane, everyone has said, has been a little bit tighter. We've seen a couple of the seven pins. We saw that out of Shannon. We saw that out of Diana. We see that now out of Danielle. But I love Danielle's game. I, well, I love everybody's game. Don't I say that every time I'm commentating? <laughs> I mean, just, well, again, one of the things that I love about women's bowling is I think any bowler can learn something. They're just, they're fundamentally sound, and it's, you know, wonderful. 72% win probability for Cote. Obviously not as high for Danielle, but it's not over yet. A lot of bowling left here. Championship match. But the 7-10 split. Almost unmakeable. That's a tough lead for McEwen. Now, one of the things Danielle does right here, she's playing much deeper, much stronger ball. It's going to read a little bit earlier, be smooth on the back end. 
she is getting just her normal rolling through it around it just a little bit but right here this is telling you right now with that blower seven and seven ten time for ball change because you're bowling against brianna who has control of the pocket it's time to make a decision I think she needs her two reps right now. I think she needs a ball that's just a little cleaner. That's one of the things too we talk about is oh we're listening. Back to Coach yes. Back to the strike. Trip 10 pin. And Brianna, I know the CDB tonight really moves quickly. She's not someone who takes a lot of time with a pre shot prep. No, and right here on this shot, she got that ball further right. And look at how nice and smooth off the end of that pattern that ball was. So here's what I would do if I were Danielle. What is she doing to give her that look that I'm not? and then make her ball selection based on that. Midway point, championship match. Ote looks for the double, 33 pin lead into the sixth. 289, 243, 278 games so far. She's bowled brilliantly, trying to keep that up. Does so well, oh. eight pin. I can't believe it didn't fall. <laughs> I'll tell you, I thought it was getting ready to. <laughs> the laws of physics. Right here. Again, look at her angles. She has just been rock solid. Right up about 14. And that ball just goes right past that eight pin. Unbelievable. The nudge was not enough. Eight pin, got there. Ocean Parkway, Long Island. Nice scenery just outside New York City. Cote trying to sew it up when we return. Almost to Art McKenzie, first career PWBA Tour title. Here it's been Brianna Cote, who was in a championship match against Clemmer last week in Florida. And lost 226, 181 to Brianna. Brianna, it's her night so far. In control again. After blasting Zavialova, Johnson, and O'Keefe. 23 pin lead out of the break. Critical sh shot and frame here. Coming off the open frame. Four and two. Good shot, 10 pin. Great ball change, totally agree with it. Much cleaner ball, still move just a little bit further right. Lines much straighter, I love it. I, I think that was the look, but we had talked about that from the very first match. Again, we talked about Diana wanting to be a little bit further left. She wound up changing balls so that she could actually be a little straighter in the front. Great ball change. Ten pin, got that. Single pin spare conversion. For Danielle McEwen. Top seeded. She told us today, gonna try to keep an open mind. Had a game plan about three hours before the show. In our meeting with her. It's all about 12 good shots, but you just couldn't anticipate Brianna Cote bowling this well. She's just been tremendous. Demolishing the competition. Left lane. Great shot. It is. She made the ball change on the right lane, made the ball change on the left lane. Still playing the same line, not getting it right of 15, 14, 15. Love it. Look at that follow through. You talk about leverage, and she liked it. She has such a long swing. I love it. I mean, just to, it's, it's, it's just poetry in motion. I mean, 
just every now and then when she gets a little late and pulls down on it, that's when she tends to overturn it on the side. Look at the breakdown. Looks great. Wow. Oh, this is unbelievable. 30 of 41. Looking for the 31st strike of the show and a flat 10 that time on the right lane. How many shows do you do when you go looking for the 30th strike on the show? <laughs> never. The, I mean, never. Great shot, but gets down the lane just a little bit further. Right here, deflects off just a little. Pin goes right in front of the 10, leaving a flat 10. I think I could go through all the pins she's left so far tonight, because there's so few. Not very many. Right. It's just been nine spare strikes, single, right? Single pins. Every single time. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking at all the score sheets here. And throwing things at me, Dave. Wasn't me. <laughs> Scorekeeper Cecil Scarborough let that one go. There's <laughs> <laughs> the 10-pin. And yes, another nice pair for Brianna Cote. Brilliant tonight. That win probability is looking good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh there. 82% to 15%. Is this going on in Vegas? Is there something I don't know about? Subject to change, but it's looking good right now for Cote's first title of the year. Eighth frame works on a spare. Avoids disaster. Four seven. What? Eight pins? I just said she only left single pins, right? Definitely kept this one a little bit straighter. As you can see, that dark board as it as it's going down, you could see she got just a little left of it. Goes a little high. She has the tenth frame, if I'm looking correctly, that her tenth frame will be on the left lane. I would make a move. Potential game changer there if the ten pin stands. Four seven stays focused, has that. And it is the Cisco spare of the game. Nicely done. Two pins to cover. Wow. And as you and I always like to look at it, Dave, we could have a potential tie. <laughs> like loops instead of there earlier. Okay. Not over yet. Okay. Time's now for Daniel. See the max scores. Here's the right lane. Oh my goodness! Another 7 10 split. Disastrous this late in the match. Right here, you're going to see she still playing a little bit deeper, but gets this ball way right. Look at this. Right there. Way out to about 7 8. Ball just does not get to the pocket. I still think the ball on the right lane is, is just a little too strong. I love it on the left lane because, believe it or not, even though that lane is hooking a little earlier, she's deeper, so she's gotten left of it. And she has a nice look, holds to the pocket. Just needs to make an adjustment on that right lane. Devastating open frame. In the eighth with a real chance to make it interesting. Out of the foundation frame, left lane for McEwen, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Did we just see back-to-back 7-10? -back uh, yes. And Have you uh, ever seen it? Actually, that's three 7-10s. Three total. Three, sorry. That's three. Back-to-back, -back, yes. Oh. But oh. that right there, Goodness. yeah, that's just, okay. I mean, that's just a bad break. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about that. And as tough as that is for Brianna Cote on the bench, seeing back-to-back 7-10 splits, back-to-back -back opens for McEwen. The wheels have fallen off for Danielle, who had a chance going into the eighth frame, and now Cote to her foundation frame. Just got to stay clean to put it away and win her third career title. 
Just so hard, Carolyn. You've been there. The rough time, Danielle, is the top seed ball so well to get this far. And see right. Just and you know what? She's, like sitting, she's sitting there thinking, you know, what did I do? What did I do? What can I do? And it's honestly, I thought she made a great shot on that left lane. I thought the shot on the right lane was close. I just think the ball was just a little bit too early. Needs nine pins. To gets ten. is the winner of the 2022 PWBA BBL Classic here on Long Island tonight. This match is over. Third career tour title for Brianna Cote. Brilliant all night. Climbs the ladder in Rockville Center to a championship. Two twelve, one fifty-two. 152 Brianna Crote, a winner for her third career title, Carolyn Doran Ballard, joined by a little Spina family for the presentation. Okay, that was some awesome bowling. Eight, ten for three, and then a, well, a mediocre two twelve, I guess, there at the end. No, I'm only kidding. Phenomenal bowling, and here to present you with a lovely trophy, Mr. John Laspina. Well, Brianna, thank you for, for everything you've done this week. You were phenomenal. I can't begin to tell you how, how grateful we all are for, for everyone's professionalism, but your skill is beyond words. Uh, that said, we're here because people pay the price for our freedom. And BVL is bowling's commitment to the veterans, 80 years, a total unbroken chain, and we're here because people pay the price. So for all of you that serve, thank you. Joseph will give you... Uh, the trophy, hold on tight. It's a BVL bowling ball with Johnny Petraglia's signature on it. He's our veteran and our pro bowler and our dear friend. And here you go, Carolyn. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, hats off to the Laskina family and everyone else here at the Bowling Center. Great job. Well done. Brianna, okay, just simply put, you were on a roll and you I hate to say this to everybody because don't think of me, but you were my pick. You were confident. You were overdue. What what happened out there tonight? I just told myself, control the pocket, and if they fall, they fall. I, I can't make them fall um, as the eight pin decided to stand. <laughs> but um, control the pocket, be me, make my spares, and if I have the highest score, I will advance. Well, you definitely had the highest score by a lot. So congratulations. And again, great bowling to all of the ladies this week in the finals. Back to you, Dave. Carol, thanks so much. What a showing for Brianna Cote. Climbing the ladder in impressive fashion. And in the end, a 212-152 win over Danielle McHugh in the top seed to take home her third career. PWBA Tour title, a reigning player of the year. It was awesome here tonight in Rockville Center, Long Island, New York. Congratulations to Brianna Cote, who wins the 2022 BBL Classic Championship here tonight. Be sure to join us Tuesday, June 21st, 7 Eastern, for the U.S. Women's Open from Kingpin's Alley Family Fun Center in South Lens Falls, New York. Now, for Carolyn Doran Ballard and the entire CBS Sports Network crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Rockville Center, Long Island. Brianna Cote, a champion tonight.